Well, hello. So I'm back with part two to look at this Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt laser engraver slash cutting tool. Now we've learned some things in part one and the idea of this video is to use everything we learned in part one and see what we can actually cut through. Right, so first up, let's see how I went about making this lovely little box to hold my feet risers in. Okay, so I've had a few questions how to transfer images and designs from the creative space to the laser itself. So I found this website called MakerCase. It gives you the option of four different styles of boxes to choose from, but we'll go for the standard square box. You can change it from inches to millimeters up here. So I'm gonna go for millimeters. Now my box, I want to be 32, 50 and 210. These are the inside dimensions and the material thickness is six millimeters. You can design it with a lid, but I want an open box. Then you have the option for T-slot joints or finger joints. I'll go with the finger joints. Once you've done all that, you can then check over your design, make sure you're happy with it. And once you are happy with it, you can download the plans. Then you open up the Xtool Creative Space and click on the image here in the top left corner. Click on the box plans you have just downloaded and it will upload them to your grid layout. Now you can see it says bottom, back, front. If you don't remove them now, it will either cut or engrave your box with them. So just click on the right in and then press backspace or delete on your keyboard and it'll get rid of them. I'll also move this bottom part so it's on top of the rest just so I don't waste any extra wood. And then I'll highlight everything which will bring up three options on the right hand side. I want all three parts to be cut out so I'll select cut and then I'll enter the laser power, the speed and how many passes I want it to make. Then I want to add to the Xtool logo. So I've downloaded one from the web. I'll click on image again and insert it. Then I'll shrink it down to fit. I'll edit the image with grayscale so that the X is a slightly different color to the rest of the text. And then I can select engrave and put in no settings. Right, so I finished my design, so I can click on the process button. It now gives me the option to frame the laser against the workpiece. But I first need to tell the laser where the start point is on the workpiece. You have these starting points over here, which you can select where you want the laser to start. So now I'll do the framing to make sure I'm not gonna go past the workpiece with the laser. Once that's done, you can click on start and you're ready to go. So I'm actually going to do this first cut on some cardboard to use as a template to make sure I'm happy with the size of the box. And just as well I did do these templates as I'm not happy with the height and the width of the box. The feet move around too much and they're not easy to access. So I've adjusted my sizes and I've come up with this one. The feet fit much better, they're much more accessible. So now I'm happy with that, I'll cut it out on some plywood. Okay, so if we look at what we've cut out here, you can see this come out quite nice. This bit come out nice. So did this bit. This still has a little bit of plywood stuck in there. It's not gone quite the way through, so I will need to address that. And it has left a little bit of a rough finish on one or two minor pieces uh, there as well. So a little bit of finishing work, and uh, I think we should have a box to put together.
Okay, so now the glue is dried, I can load the feet into the box and this is exactly what I wanted. So I think this box turned out really well. One thing to bear in mind, because I'm cutting through plywood, I'm also having to cut through layers of glue and I think that may just hamper the laser a little bit and its efficiency at cutting through each pass. So on to the next test, I've now lined up four different pieces and thicknesses of wood. We have 10mm walnut, 12mm sapili, 18mm MDF and 24mm thick poplar. So I've now programmed the laser to cut a simple little circle. So now we'll see how many passes it takes a laser to actually cut all the way through these pieces. So if we take a look at the walnut, you can see I only cut the one circle, I stopped it just as it was cut in the second, and that's because in five passes it did cut through. It didn't actually need five, I think it did it in three, possibly four, but it was definitely under five. And I think because it did do the five, it's charred it a bit on the bottom, but it has left quite a nice circular cutout. On with this appealing. And it's the same with the Sapili. Again, I believe it went through in three passes. So I did let it cut the uh, second circle out. So you can see it's gone all the way through. But on here, this was made after two passes. So I kept it going just to see exactly how many it did take. So I know at two, it got to there. So that was when I stopped it because it was three that it cut this out in. And again, a little bit of charring on the bottom, again, too many passes once it's cut through because then it once it's cut through it's just then burning so moving on to the mdf and well it speaks for itself really it's, it's quite disappointing it just carried on burning i think the mdf held the heat so i stopped it before it did the 10 passes for this circle because it was pointless carrying on um, it did the eight on here and you can see it's just left a little bit of a nub. I did notice that, like I say, the laser would cut it and the MDF would just carry on burning. So it's probably not the best piece of material to use is 18 mil thick piece of MDF. Um, yeah, and it didn't, didn't manage to cut anything out. Now interestingly we have this piece of poplar and you can see it's cut all three of the holes out. I actually allowed it to carry on cutting these two after I saw that it cut this one out because I did want to see what happened um, burning wise between these two like, um, like we had on the MDF I didn't want to say it cut through when it didn't. Charring on the back but mainly because it made more passes than it needed to. Now obviously this is the first type of machine like this I've ever owned so I couldn't give you my opinion on how this compares to other machines. But looking around on the internet I find features that are only on this one that I haven't found on the majority of the other ones available to purchase. So I do like the fact that x have come up with their own aluminium extrusion and they haven't used the standard aluminium extrusion you can just buy anywhere. The machine fits together really well and all the bolts fit flush into the machine. I like the fact that Xtool have come up with these steel roller wheels instead of the plasticky rubber type wheels like I have on my 3D printer because they do wear out with time and having these steel wheels will cut down on the maintenance that you have to do. One thing I do dislike is the cable management and the air assist pipe work. There's nowhere for you to secure it neatly and it just seems to coil up like this. Looks untidy and I've not had it catch yet, but I'm sure there's a better solution. And the same with this cable management, it's just held on with cable ties. For a premium machine, I would have thought that they could have provided some better clips. And obviously as someone completely new to this, I find this really easy to use, including a creative space as well. Right, time to make something.
little bit I've cut out. I just quickly whip this up in creative space. But you know, you could use something like this as a as a box lid or a box front, or you can have it as one of them fancy candle sort of you know whatever they're called. I don't know where the candle burns behind it. You see the flickering flame. And it, ooh, look amazing. But you could have one of those things. Um, it did have to cut one of these out twice, and that's because there's a little bit of a knot just uh, affecting it, and you can see a little bit on here. No, you can't because it won't focus. Yeah, just there. Um, it didn't go all the way through in one pass. If I'd have done it again on the second pass, because of that knot, it would have cut this out much easier. And of course, if you're someone more artistic than I am, you could make something with these cutout pieces. All I could come up with was this really dodgy looking owl. To wit, to woo! I also thought I'd have a go at engraving something more challenging, so I tried to make a copy of my Ducati course sign. Turned out all right, that. But there we go, you can come up with some nice fancy little designs. Anyway, that's it for this video. The goal was to see if I could cut through all these random different pieces of wood because predominantly that's what I'm going to use this laser engraver for, is cutting, not actually engraving. Thanks to Xtool for sending me this tool to have a little look and play around with it. And I hope if you're looking into printing a laser, you've learned something from this video because I certainly have. I'll leave all the links below to, you know, everything here. If you do click on the link and purchase something, I get a tiny little kickback because they're affiliate links. So, you know, every little bit helps. So thanks for that. Anyway, that's it. And I'll see you in the next one.